Hey, guys. Hey, did boomers really have it easier than millennials when buying their first home? Everybody says they did, but did they really? Yeah, we just found, came across this article that I thought was so interesting. We thought we'd share it with you guys today because I think there's just this feeling in the marketplace um, of the, the millennial generation that, oh, the boomers had it easy. Well, let's take a look at the, what the data says. This is an article by Ken Griffith, yeah, June 16th, 2024. So that's pretty current information. Right. Just read this on Realtor.com and it said, you know, just as the boomers um, were entering the market to buy their first homes, the typical mortgage payments soared amid rapid inflation. Um, home prices had shot up more than 60% in the four years prior and mortgage rates serves, surged to their highest level in recent memory. Um, now, these young home buyers weren't millennials. They were the boomers. And the year was 1980. Mortgage rates were 16%. And the average monthly home loan payment jumped from 34% from a year earlier. So kind of similar to what we've seen here lately. Uh, yeah, we're well back at that percentage rate, right? What did oh, you say it was? 16? 16. Was that what I just said? Yeah, 16%. What did I just say? <laughs> yes, mortgage rates topped 16%. So we're well back of that right now. We're somewhere between seven and eight percent. It bounces around. It goes up to seven and a half, and it comes down to seven. Everybody says, "Hey, interest rates are down," and they are, but they've been in the same range now for quite some time. Yeah, the the millennials perhaps are a little bit bitter over the economic havoc wrecked by wreaked by the two thousand and seven market crash, um, global financial crisis. This says just as they entered the workforce. And they've long complained, you know, that boomers had it easy. Houses were cheaper, jobs were pl pl plentiful, and college tuition could be paid off with a summer job, according to the common wi uh, wisdom. Well, it's not that way now, since we're currently paying college tuition. Yeah, summer job <laughs> isn't going to catch the college rates of today. No, um, but according to historical analysis, boomers arguably faced the toughest housing market ever for first-time homebuyers. Um, during the years when boomers turned 30, the share of the median hold household income needed to make a typical mortgage payment averaged 33.2%, the highest of any living generation. So according to the historical analysis, boomers faced the toughest housing market at the time. Yeah, I think a lot of the millennials, when they were coming in to the housing market in the crash of 2007, 8, 9, mm -hmm. 10, that uh, they didn't see really as any advantage to buying a home because a lot of their friends who had bought homes were in the process of a short sale. And those were no fun. For one thing, they weren't short. They were, took a long time to complete, and they were very expensive. Yeah, and prices were coming down during that time. They were declining um, right at that time. And by the way, Generation, the Millennials, which they call Generation Y, they're 28 to 43 right now because I get all the numbers, the alphabet mixed up. So these are we're talking about Millennials, 28 to 43. That's right. That's prime time home buying for first time home buyers right in that age bracket. So when the millennials were are turning 30, um, the lowest they had the lowest mortgage burden since interest rates were so low at a record low for 10 years in a row. Um, the typical mortgage burden for a millennial is 22.5% of the median income. That's lower than the 25.8% median faced by Generation X. X people are 44 to 59. Um, and, and edges out the 22.6% paid by the silent generation. Um, so that's kind of, it's kind of in that range, but, uh, but again, nobody had it easy is kind of the bottom line. <laughs> it's never been easy to buy a house for any generation. It hadn't, it's taken discipline to save up the down payment, discipline to make your bills or pay your bills on time and discipline to go ahead and pull the trigger. It's not ever easy. The first year home ownership is the most difficult year because you don't know how it's all going to sift out. It gets much easier after the first year, then you get in your third and fourth year, and boy, do they go by fast. Uh, but it's but the moral of the story here is get in the market. Um, so I'll keep going here. The, um, the Today's uh, tough housing market is the least affordable in history. It's the least affordable in 40 years because of low inventory. I mean, we've been talking about low inventory now for the last four years. And I mean, the inventory still has not come back to the levels that it was in 2019. 
people got very, very comfortable in their homes in 2020, 2021, 2022, and they still seem to be very comfortable. Now, there are things that come up where people do have to move, but if you don't have to move, people aren't moving. That's right. And uh, the buyers in today's mar uh, mar market face high mortgage rates, high home prices, and low inventory. So what does that create? An exceptionally challenging market to be a first-time home buyer. Yes, it is, especially mm -hmm. as prices continue to climb. Mm -hmm. And they're continued to climb on supply and demand. And that's not going to change. That's the fundamentals of any market. The um, home prices have consistently outpaced inflation for as far back as there's reliable data. In 2024, dollars adjusted for inflation using the Consumer Price Index, median home prices averaged 193000 over the years of the silent generation turned 30, compared to 227000 for boomers, 279000 for Gen X, and 319000 for millennials so far. So even with adjusted home prices grew 18%, for boomers from the prior generation and 23% for Gen X and 14% for millennials. So it just shows that the data says, um, you know, everybody has had a rough go of it. And you covered a lot of generations there very quickly. Mm -hmm. That's why I was trying to give the ages because I'm always confused. I'm like, am I an X, a Y, a Z? What are you? So that's why I wanted to lay it out for you. So 45% of baby boomers were able to buy their first home between the ages of 25 and 34. Um, and as of 2019, only 37% of millennials in the same age range owned a home. Um, so if millennials um, had an easier time getting in, they had some challenges just based on the timing uh, with the market turning. Uh, and they came out of college with big debt. So one of the problems with first-time homebuyers is they have debt that the other generations didn't have, that they have to calculate in that home loan payment counts against them when they're trying to qualify for a mortgage. It does, and there's not, it's not unheard of to have 100 or 200,000, 300,000 even in debt to get a college degree these days. Yeah, the, even though the boomers didn't have um, college debt when they were entering the market, they entered the market at a time of high unemployment. Unemployment peaked at an all-time high, 10.8% uh, in, in December of 1982. If any That's of you, that 1982. 1982, if any of you, I mean, I remember with the recession of 82. We'll talk about that story another time. <laughs> um, but unemployment rates averaged 7% from 76 to 94, a period when the boomers were turning 30. So there's been challenges for everyone. That yes. you, everybody talk about unemployment rates, um, but for millennials, the unemployment rate has averaged 5.6%. Well, that's half of what it was in 82. So most of them were employed. We heard a statistic today that um, here at our local community hospital in Ventura, that last year there were only 3,000 babies born when uh, normally, whatever normally, they, however they count it, there's 4,600 babies born. So there's less people coming online here. <laughs> yeah, who knew those babies were a revenue stream? Right. So that was just an, an interesting step because those are the babies that'll be living in these houses someday. That's right. And they're <laughs> going to need to build a lot more houses. We're about 5 million units short nationwide. That's a lot of units and there's nothing going to get any better than that. Uh, we continue to grow as a nation, but we're falling very far behind on building quality houses for that generation. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you look at what the first time home buyer homes that they used to build, you're just a little cute little track house. They just don't build those anymore. Um, they're just not available. And here in our, it's here in Ventura, they're building more apartments than they are even condos that, that the millennials can own. And they are expensive. Yeah, they don't, too. they don't build a lot of three bedroom, one bath houses with one car garages. <laughs> Those days are gone. Yes, they are gone. But I mean, it's not impossible. And of course, the greatest asset that most people have is their home. So I encourage all my young people to buy something. I mean, you don't even have to live in it if you don't have to, but get in the market because, you know, homes, oh, oh, uh, owning real estate, like the article said, has always outpaced inflation. And of course, we've had a crazy run of inflation here, but those that own a home are in a way better position. You have a fixed housing cost. You know what your monthly payments are going to be um, versus having to move. And we've had a lot of people selling their investment property right now, and that displaces the tenant. 
So then they have to go out and find something new. And most of them have had, you know, real sticker shock on having to go out and find a new home to live in. That, especially people that have been long-term tenants. It's very difficult to go out if you've been in a place for a while and go out and try to replace that at the same rent. It doesn't happen. In fact, 70% of the homes in Ventura County are under market rents. That's mm -hmm. the mom and pops, somebody that owns four units or less, and they are willing to take less than market rent so they don't have turnover in their tenants. It makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we encourage everyone to don't wait to buy real estate. You buy real estate and wait. And we are happy to have conversations with anyone thinking about uh, getting into their first home or if you're thinking about helping your kids or grandkids get in, in a home. We've had lots of those conversations. So, you know, we uh, talk about real estate every single day. We're looking at the market, watching the news, and uh, we would love to talk to you. Homes and prices every day. That's what we look at. GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge.